What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Good Sunday evening. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, end of the weekend, April 24, 2022, about 6.56 p.m. California time. That means Monday is tomorrow, the dreaded M-Day. 3.4 earthquake coming in right now into the area of South America. Looks like around the Peru-Chile Trench. We have seen a uh, quite a bit of swarming going on down there in the three range and most of that is some deep activity by these rings uh, raised up off of the globe here the earthquake 3d globe indicates some deep earthquake activity occurring there into the peru chile trench let's go ahead and check out uh, the activity out here on the usgs map right now there's some activity uh, right there on the uh, south american region a couple fours and uh, even some fives here no three showing up here on the usgs map once again only 4.0 and above but there is definitely quite a bit of deep earthquake movement here we got to watch this pretty closely uh, most of the time the deeper earthquake activity tends to lead to uh, you guessed it some uh, further larger quake upstream uh, most of the time that's what we see here in this uh, high accumulated slip zone rate or rate uh, slip rate zone there we go and this one has a uh, quite a bit of uh, accumulated stress here in a short amount of time so watching this region pretty closely uh, for possibly some larger scale movement. We back out here and look at the larger scale of the flat earth model. Quite the increase in movement uh, around Japan as well and through the Taiwan area. Fours and fives up and down the board throughout the Indonesia area as well. Some of this movement here uh, around the Java Trench deep. Uh, we got one here 594 kilometer deep 4.3 in the Java Trench. That is tremendously deep for this area. So something over there brewing uh, for sure. This is the, go ahead and pop up here. This is the map since about uh, 1900 or so. There's not a lot of quakes here. There's obviously those dark circles there indicating some deeper movement and uh, below the 300 kilometer range. And of course this is a trench, right? A subduction zone. And uh, it does accumulate quite a bit of stress upstream but also at the same time there's some larger earthquakes there that do occur down below the uh you know the surface there like kind of like what we're seeing today tonight uh, with that deeper movement but uh, still got to watch this deep activity tends to spell further large-scale movement upstream and that would include areas here around the indonesia region and the java trench so watching that uh, pretty closely there Let's see what else we got. Uh, not No earthquakes showing up here around the uh, region of the uh, Krakatoa volcano, at least here on the USGS map, not seeing anything. I know they did have some ash emissions uh, and a little eruptive stage recently, but I'm not seeing any earthquake activity pop up here on this map. Uh, I'm not for sure if the EMSC models are gonna show anything over there, but we, we'll check it out. Kinda like to look at that and uh, compare the two so to speak so we'll zoom in here and uh, see what we can find in terms of um, activity and it looks like at least through the java trench here just shy of the uh, uh, krakatoa volcano with his which is in this region right here it looks like uh, emsc only showing some threes and some twos here in the region just to the east of of the uh, volcano so Nothing major going on as far as any uh, earthquake activity goes. Uh, China looks pretty quiet. One earthquake up here north of the Him Himalayas, 4.4. And some movement here in Afghanistan of 4.5. Out here around the Mediterranean Sea and the Crete area. A couple fours kicking off here. Another 4.8 earthquake in the Bosnia region. That is an aftershock sequence there from uh, last week's 5. Point, uh, what was that? Let's see, 5.7 that struck. So a little bit of aftershock sequences there uh, following that uh, pretty large quake there in the area of Bosnia uh, a few days ago. Backing out of here, uh, what else we got in the Atlantic? A little bit of movement up here around the Arctic Circle. Looks like uh, 4.8 in the Norwegian Sea area, Greenland Sea. Looks like right there on that plate boundary. Eurasian plate and the uh, North American plate, South America plate, or uh, South America uh, South Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mid-Atlantic Ocean as well. Doesn't look like uh, 
at least the Mid-Atlantic Ridge area looks pretty quiet. We're not seeing any uh, movement taking place there over the last 24 hours. Looks like uh, the movement here in Puerto Rico has tapered off a little bit. Still looking at that uh, swarming ongoing there in the Puerto Rico area, but not as significant. A couple of earthquakes in the Middle America Trench uh, up, up off the coast of Mexico and the Nicaragua area. This earthquake activity is old, getting ready to drop off the map here, so no further movement taking place there in that area of the world. West Coast, uh, nothing going on up here in the Pacific Northwest. Not a whole lot anyway. I was watching the uh, Dinsmore, California station uh, on the live stream earlier. Seen a couple spikes popping up there, some earthquakes showing up, but uh, man, nothing being reported here by the USGS, and this is the all magnitudes map. While we're on it, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map from tonight. See if it's been updated. And it looks like it has. It looks like they're starting to update it around 7 p.m. now. Uh, at least my time, anyway, 7 p.m. West Coast time. Uh, 50 epicenters of trimmer into the area of the Oregon region, southwestern part of Oregon, by the coast range. Of course, this is down dip downstream. No major trimmer event going on right now. Just a couple uh, 50 epicenters of trimmer in that area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, into the Pacific Northwest, like I said, there's not much going on there. Uh, north of Seattle, one little earthquake. Aside from that, uh, most of the activity is down south. And even at that, we're not looking at any wide-scale large earthquake activity. Uh, a little bit of swarming that was occurring here in the uh, Hawthorne, Inglewood, concrete jungle area down here in Southern California. Um, not much. We had one little 1.6 that occurred earlier this afternoon, but since then it looks like the swarm, this little swarming activity is dying down. Some further movement offshore, off the coast of Oceanside. Looks like a 2.2 uh, outside of Dana Point area, and also a 2.0, 19 kilometers here. Along the San Diego trough, at the northern end, that, uh, does get some deep earthquakes out there. I've noticed the increase in deep earthquake movement uh, there in Southern California recently. Let's see if we can find out a little bit of information here on the San Diego uh, trough area. If they have it, looks like that's going to be it. Uh, it's a right lateral. That's kind of interesting because there's some deep movement going on down there. Uh, length about 150 kilometers. Of course, this is going to be this zone right here. Kind of sits offshore here. And it does extend a little bit down past this region. Just not showing it there on the map. 150, uh, 150 kilometers. Uh, looks like some recent earthquake activity, but slip rate roughly 1.5 mm per year. Not a whole lot of info on this trough on this fault system out there. Intervals between major ruptures is unknown. So there's that, that, that goes to say with a lot of fault systems throughout California. I seriously think California, Southern California is definitely a ticking time bomb in terms of some major activity soon. I think we're just living in a period of quietness, built up strain, uh, accumulated stress that's really building up in certain areas. A garlic fault zone for one the southern end of the San Andreas Fault, and uh, I'm sure numerous other fault systems here uh, throughout the Los Angeles area and uh, offshore as well. So just a matter of time, folks. It's not always going to be quiet along the west coast. Uh, eastern part of the, or at least the plains, southern plains out here, Oklahoma, some earthquake activity. Even this uh, was from earlier this morning. That's going to be uh, dropping off the maps pretty soon. Look at the east coast. Very quiet. Nothing going on. So yeah, just pretty quiet in the North American region right now. Let's go ahead and check out the I'm gonna check out the volcanoes there into the Pacific Northwest. There's many of them we can check. We'll just check a, a couple here. Main ones we like to check, of course, is Mount St. Helens. We've been having a little bit of swarm oh within the past couple months here. Nothing really recent, although every time we check this seismograph station, we do see uh, some earthquake activity popping up here. And uh, definitely looks like there is some movement uh, on the map here, on the charts. A couple small earthquakes there. Definitely an earthquake here in the black line. So five or six small, very small earthquakes occurring there at Mount St. Helens. And looking at uh, this morning and this afternoon 
on this graph, which will hopefully load pretty soon. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This looks pretty darn active uh, in terms of uh, earthquake activity. Now, I know sometimes they can get some ice quakes up there, but this doesn't look like ice quakes. This definitely looks like a volcano, or uh, not volcanic, well, it's a volcano, right? But it's earthquake activity here at the volcano. I don't see any harmonic tremor, any type of um, volcanic activity, so to speak. Just small little microquakes here. Looks like these are S waves from a from an earthquake somewhere. I uh, can't remember exactly what occurred around this UTC time, but distant, very far from the station. But the S waves do travel and leave those squiggly lines. But uh, man, that's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of movement here, folks. Probably looking at a good. Uh, 50 earthquakes or so, 60 earthquakes maybe. And again, these are not big earthquakes. These are definitely very small microquakes, probably probably within uh, the 0.5 range, maybe 0.2. So not even one magnitude, not even a magnitude one, but there's definitely quite a bit popping there in the area of Mount St. Helens there at the uh, dome. Let's go ahead and look at uh, some other volcanic uh, regions here, such as, uh, we'll check out the Newberry Volcano down in Oregon. Beautiful area, that has been active as well, but of course these guys aren't showing anything here on the map. Looks like the last two weeks was when uh, any earthquake activity was being reported. Uh, looking at the North Rim, Newberry, Oregon seismograph station. And uh, not really seen anything here listed on that uh, Graph. Let me go back here to earlier in the day. Any day now. It's kind of a little odd. Huh. All right. Um. Maybe one, right? Maybe one little earthquake. Aside from that, definitely looks clear. I'm trying to decipher any type of any type of uh, earthquake activity in here, and most of the time it will show up as a darker line compared to these uh you know your typical seismogram that's drawing the motions you know on, on this is a digital graph but uh obviously but they uh definitely looks like uh they're, they got it tuned up here trying to peek and see if there's anything that uh is showing up there at the newberry but i don't see anything i do see some s waves here like similar on the uh Mount St. Helens chart that we looked at, but as far as local seismograph activity, maybe one very small one there. So not super active at the Newberry Volcano in Oregon. Uh, we'll check out Mount Hood, see what's going on up here. Closest station looks like uh, just to the south here, a uh, three component broadband station called Top of Palmer Lift. Not really, well, not really seen too much in terms of activity there. Uh, this, again, this is at Mount Hood, beautiful volcano, and like I say, we're pretty quiet along the west coast, the Cascades and the uh, 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 Sierra Nevada and stuff like that. We're, in terms of earth uh, volcanic activity, it's pretty quiet, folks, but then again, it's not always going to be like that. Uh, not for sure what this is. These don't look like It's hard to say. These kind of look like earthquakes. But then again, some of them have almost identical measurements. And most of the time, earthquakes are not going to show the exact same type of measurement. So I can't say for certain uh, what those are, these little clumps of uh, activity. But they all look equal in size and reading. And that's almost impossible in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, let me check the previous day on the 23rd there's some s waves there from some earthquake uh and then we get these little periods of uh noise and it could be something to do with the top of palmer lift you know maybe there's who knows what's up there machinery that uh, comes on around this time every day it seems like it's consistent as far as this activity i don't think it's earthquake activity um let's go ahead and check out a different uh seismograph here maybe this one from uh uh, Lamberson Butte. Let's see what these guys are showing. One little tiny spike right there. Very, very small. Uh, see what else is going on here. 
maybe another one right here this other activity very weak can't even decipher what those are uh, but it's not picking up uh, any earthquake activity if it was uh, there you know some legit earthquake activity there at Mount Hood it would definitely pick it up on those uh, on that station which is only a very short distance away from uh, this other one take a look at one more here and see what we got uh, that one's kind of out of whack as well and um, the definitely not earthquake activity that's just it's hard to say what those are sometimes we see them um, maybe an earthquake sig uh, signature right there but the, these other ones I can't really tell it's really hard to uh, I don't think they're volcanic I don't think it's harmonic trimmer harmonic trimmer would definitely give a pretty good decent signature and that would show up on not uh, only that station but others around the park so that's some type of interference I believe there at the Mount Hood volcano so let's go ahead and move on and look at uh, Mount Rainier is another one that has been getting some swarms. It looks like even within the last hour or two hours, they've had a little microquake there at 0.4. Let's see what they got cooking up here um, in terms of, man, I wish they had more seismographs there in the area. I think one of these are out of whack or just not working. Uh, one little bitty small spike there on the map, on the chart, I should say. This, this is uh, again Mount Rainier volcano see what we got yeah a couple earthquakes there see that one right here uh, looks like another one right here maybe another small one but uh, yeah nothing major showing up folks that I see just a couple sporadic uh, small Microquakes in the area of Mount Rainier. Nothing like Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is kind of a. I'm really surprised that they didn't mention the, or haven't shown anything on here, in terms of that activity. And it's obviously showing up. Last earthquake looks like was reported on the 22nd, a couple days ago, and the activity we just looked at was um, well from earlier today. So we'll see if they update them throughout the night or possibly tomorrow sometime. It is a weekend. Maybe someone hasn't. Uh, had time to look at them, but we will definitely uh, keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, what do we got here? It's kind of a chart here of earthquakes per day since about two, uh, 2017. Really starting to see a ramping up here towards the end of 2021 and 2022 with the amount of earthquakes uh, kicking off there at, uh, that's the raw data uh, at Mount St. Helens. A little bit of historical data here as well. Kind of shows the area. And it's roughly right at the summit as well. All right, what else we got here, folks? Uh, a little solar weather activity to chat about as well. We did see a little flare pop up here. Looks like it finally made it to an M1.0, right? That's probably about the largest one we've had in the last couple days. And by the looks of it, it looks like this thing is flaring from this massive sunspot right here. You guys see that brightness? Uh, that is from sunspot, uh, looks like 2993. That is the culprit that gave us uh, our last M flare a couple days ago as well. There's some intermixing of the polarities uh, there in the magnetic fields and of that sunspot. Uh, looks like we're starting to get a little bit of intermixing too between the 2994 area. So as massive as they are, like I say, they, they're not going to produce any significant flaring unless they get that spark, you know, that, that spark that really gives them, uh, gives them their, uh, their flares, kind of creates that flaring. Uh, let's see here. It looks like it did create a little bit of radio blackout here on the global D-layer absorption map. Looks like centered over, once again, the Western Pacific out there uh, north of Papua New Guinea. And uh, west of Hawaii, it looks like. So, yeah, we'll see uh, how this plays out as these sunspots uh, just continue to uh, evolve. But uh, we got some further development coming around the bend here in, the, in this trail of sunspots. 2998 down there as well. Some pretty active 
in terms of sunspot activity, but flaring right now just kind of uh, minimal. 40% chance of an M flare. Of course, we reached that here within the last 20 minutes. 95% uh, chance of C flare. X flare downgraded to a 10% chance. So we'll see how that uh, how that plays out, right? All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Hope everyone has a, uh, a great start to the work week out there tomorrow. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning sometime with an update. But uh, I think with the trimmer activity coming out now at seven o'clock, we're going to push our updates. Normally we do them around six to six thirty p.m. Um, but because of the update or the uh, trimmer activity coming out late now at seven, uh, I'll probably stick to seven o'clock p.m. West Coast time when I do my updates. So that's going to be nine. Uh, no, it's going to be 10 Eastern time and, uh, of course, seven o'clock West coast time out here. So, and then of course, in between the different time zones. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. And, uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. By the way, I did send out those decals to those that requested them. Every single one that requested one, you guys got one coming out one. No, you got, you guys got a couple coming out, a couple decals coming out to the folks there that uh, requested them. Uh, there's that Dinsmore station. You guys see that little spike here on the map? Been watching those. They've been, they've been popping up every once in a while throughout the day. So a little bit of activity, ongoing microquake activity there in the northwestern part of California, but uh, no major movement. Just a little little spotty earthquake activity. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will chat to you a little bit later. Peace out.